In the town of Deanston, we have the Deanston Distillery, which started up in 1966, but it has a much earlier history than that. The distillery started in 1785 as a cotton mill designed by Sir Richard Arkwright, the famous inventor of the water-powered spinning frame, and it ran for 180 years. The mill shut down in 1965. But a year later, the owner of the mill, James Finley Company, in a partnership, started up the new Deatson Distillery. The distillery has some old school equipment, like the open top 11 ton cast iron mash ton, and it's the only one like it in Scotland. It has eight 60,000 liter steel washbacks, two 18,000 liter wash stills, and two 16,000 liter spirit stills. The stills have a bulbous constriction in them and the line arms are slightly angled upwards. This helps take out the sharp tones and leaves the fruity esters. The River Teeth powered the old cotton mill as it does today for the distillery. The cotton mill was powered by four water wheels including Hercules, second largest in the world. In 1949 they were replaced with water turbines which are still used today. The River Teeth is not only the source of power for the distillery, but is also the water that they use in their whiskey. Deanston single malts are bottled at a minimum of 46% ABV, they are non-chill filtered, and no color is added. Well, welcome to the Wells World of Whiskey. We're going to do an early one today, and um, it's going to be with one I've been for some reason trying to get reviewed and just haven't done it. So Deanston, uh, a bit of an old friend of mine, uh, it is a whiskey that uh, I am going to do both 12 and the 18. Uh, I have, uh, I was introduced to this qu quite a few years back. No, I've only, I think this is only the second bottle I've had. So anyways, um, I will, will show you the bottle. There it is. And a little history behind uh, this uh, this distillery because it's not like a lot of your traditional distilleries, uh, the older distilleries that were built during uh, different stages of whiskey booms, and some of course didn't uh, survive uh, because there was also whiskey declines. It was a bit of a roller coaster in the early days, but. This distillery here actually uh, got started in 1965. Now the buildings are incredibly historic and um, really I'm going to get a little assistance here. I did a bit, a bit of research through the years but you forget things but uh, basically um, uh, originally this distillery was a cotton mill and um, uh, it is uh, located uh, on, the, on the River Teeth and uh, it is uh, actually the River Teeth is a very important part of this distillery because that's where they get their power. In fact, it's one of the few uh, places uh, in the early days that actually had uh, more power than, than uh, it needed. And it had, uh, I think at one point, four water wheels. It had uh, one water wheel <clears throat> that was um, uh, actually 30, 30 and a half feet in diameter, the largest in Europe and the second largest in the world. It produced 300 horsepower. I believe that was called, uh, uh, I think that one was Hercules. They had one called Samson. So they had four wheels. Now these wheels operated up into the 40s until they got into, uh, they produced uh, hydroelectric, hydroelectric power with uh, gas turbines. Pardon me, no, no, they produced it with, there was still water. It was, these were water turbines. And, um, uh, the quick history on, on Deanston, of course, is that it was uh, originally a uh, cotton mill and um, I believe it was Buchanan that started the, uh, the original, it was, a, it was a flax mill originally, but he, he did the change up. <clears throat> now, there's a, a famous designer, Richard Arkwright, that uh, basically is the, the brilliance behind the design of uh, of the cotton mill, <clears throat> and um, you you see that that uh, architecture dating back to uh, you know the 1790ish, uh, early 1800s, and then of course the you know the changes in the community. Now, <clears throat> Richard Arkwright's uh, fame was that he was the first to get you know the the we'll say the, the spinning jenny, jenny. I think it was Hargraves uh, created the spinning jenny, but 
To get the fabric tight enough, you needed water power. So uh, R Richard Arkwright was a, uh, an inventor, a uh, brilliant man. He actually created, uh, or we'll say he advanced the spinning jenny to where it actually produced really high quality textile. And uh, this mill operated for 180 years, right up into, I think it was 1964. Um, the, the, the Finley family, uh, we'll say James Finley and Company, were the people that really got that, uh, that cotton mill up and running. And um, they basically, uh, they sent up this young kid, uh, James Smith, to manage it, 17 years old. James Smith turned out to be brilliant himself because he uh, basically did a lot of changes in the mill, in the community, built the community around the mill, and probably uh, maybe a bit of a change from, uh, from Dickens' days where, you know, you had uh, kids being put to work at a very young age and not getting an education. Well, he actually supplied really good housing. Uh, there, was, there was coal ranges in each of these home places to dry their clothing. Um, he also... Uh, had it was mandatory the kids went to school if they were going to work in the mill they had to have an education and they even had evening schools um, they had basically a modern community and um, James Smith is is known for you know advancing both the uh, the, the machinery uh, the structural and also uh, he's actually uh, famous for uh, water drain, soil drainage, and it's, I think it's called deinstonization in that. Um, a very interesting uh, fellow. He spent 40 years, uh, did eventually retire. He, when he was finishing up at the mill there, things were probably, uh, they'd finished their peak and they were probably on the decline. Now, um, eventually, uh, you know, world competition and that, the mill does shot down and, and in 1965 uh, the original owners Finley and they uh, they were kind of concerned well we can't just let this mill sit here it's a huge huge building huge buildings and so what they uh, they decided to do well, let's get uh, let's get going and maybe look at uh, designing a, um, a distillery because that was during the distillery boom in the 60s and so I think I'm um, just trying to think it was Bullock that they teamed up with and they, uh, they basically turned it into a distillery. Uh, nine months it took them. They had to remove a few of the floors there to get all the, the pot stills in. But uh, the, distill, the distillery ran for uh, oh, a good 10, 12 years, and then we have the decline. And uh, it was sold to, I believe it was uh, Evergordon, uh, who, who, who did shut it down. Uh, Inver Gordon basically passed it on to uh, Bern Stewart. And Bern Stewart got it up and running again. And, uh, uh, of course, Bern Stewart was absorbed by a distill company. But um, he, other than that shutdown period for, it was eight years, uh, back in the 90s, uh, it, it, it's been a productive uh, distillery. Their focus has been uh, non-chill filtered, no color added, usually around 46 up to cast strength. And uh, they work a lot with the bourbon casts and they do some uh, uh, Oloroso finishes and other casks. So, you know, some other information on the distillery itself. Now, Obviously, the distillery doesn't look like traditional distillery. Uh, you know, kind of the the pagodas and uh, you know the uh, the unique uh, uh, chimney and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. You'll see in let's see, uh, you know, a Strathlys, uh, Strathada, pardon me, or a uh, on a let's see, uh, oh, a Cardew, or, or or one of our more traditional uh, distilleries. Um, it's a big old cotton mill, but it is uh, it is the uh, you know Richard Arkwright's uh, architecture from way back uh, the early 1800s, well actually late 1790ish, um, early 1800s. Uh, that is makes it a, uh, a historic uh, landmark, and um, it, it, there's a lot. It's a huge building. It's it, it, and several other buildings. They did have to build 
My understanding was they did build the uh, a new building for the uh, for the washbacks. So uh, this is a company focused on quality, and um, they have had more success recent. Certainly, were under the radar for a long time because their their uh, whiskeys were used more in blends, and they still are used in blends. There's, it is a smaller percentage than a single that is a single malt, but they are starting to increase with the more demand for single malts. So. Well, that's it for now. Uh, I think uh, we better get into this review. This is going to be a uh, certainly a review that I've been waiting to do for some time. Um, we have, I think this is bottle number two, if I remember rightly, but I'm going to bring it up close so you can take a peek at it. It is naturally colored. So there it is. That is the 12-year-old. I do have an 18. We will be doing that later on. So hopefully we are in and, uh Geeson itself has a visitor center, and I'm, I, I'm, I'm certain there'll be a lot of history on the, the cotton mill as, as well as the distillery itself. It had uh, quite a few, uh, I think it was three different water wheels, and one of them, I think it was called Hercules, was the largest in Europe, I think the second largest in the world, 36 feet in diameter. And they just recently unearthed, I think there's a film on it, there's a YouTube film on it there of them... Uh, unearthing that and I think it might be on display as well so anyways the nose this has got kind of a that wee bit of that funkiness of a sweet sour and then we would have sulfur in the background so you know, kind of like a, a Glenn Farkless more like um, So sweet and sour, uh, we've got the uh, the caramel uh, toffee notes and wee bits of um, chocolate going on. Uh, this is uh, uh, sort of familiar to me because I do, I've had this around a while, but I could confuse this with another uh, scotch. It's, um, it, you know, there's some scotches that are very unique, like I did, just did a, um, a Glen, uh, pardon me, a Loch Lomond. Loch Lomond is unique. I can, I can. That, that's got a unique, unique nose. This is more of a traditional. Um, you get certainly the with the sweet and, and, and sour notes there. You are getting some of the spices. I am getting uh, certainly. I'm certainly getting oak here, and uh, the malt is coming through. Uh, nice, very nice nose. This is, some, some times when you get into a nose there, you just, you're trying to catch something new. You're trying to pick up something new. And um, I'm getting uh, like new leather. Yeah, the, 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 the smell of new leather. Almost um, as though you had a, like a new leather upholstery in a car, a brand new leather upholstered car. And... If you've ever, ever been into a leather shop, you know, you do leather. With, again, the sweet and sour notes in the background. Even a slight bit of floral stuff coming through now. I'm getting the apples and the pears. So we are getting more stuff going on here. Uh, probably more happening right now because it's earlier in the day. I'm picking up more. So yeah, the, the apples and the and the pears are, are more prominent now. Okay, the palate. Okay, give it a good chew. Sweet. As I expect, always with this drink, it is always sweet. There is um, the the tobacco in the in the background, and I've always gotten the tobacco out of this one here, but not a bad tobacco. It's 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 a sweet tobacco. Um, maybe a little bit of uh, chocolate blending in with that tobacco. A bit, a bit of uh, the sour stuff coming through now. Nice coating on the tongue. 
I'm going to uh, give you a, the legs on this too because um, it does have legs. So again, I, I did mention that the tongue, it's a velvety coating. And um, I find if we do this a little bit slower there, we'll get those legs. The pears, pears and apples, they're a little bit more on the stewed side. So stewed pears, stewed app, um, we'll say stewed apple, or maybe even have some apple pie, apple crisp. And um, the dark fruit kind of at the beginning, but it's kind of disappeared. But the spices are definitely uh, there. Um, um, the, the pepper kind of can bounce back and forth between that and the tobacco. Um, the chocolate is definitely dark chocolate. So to the finish. Definitely leaving a coating. And there is body to this drink. Um, certainly not a dry finish. Very moist. It's a, a, definitely a, a good sipping drink. It's it, it's an easy one, but it's not as simple to drink as, as some of the, we'll say some of the Glen Levitts and Glen or even some of the McCallums, the Singletons and that. It's actually got some different things going on. Um, definitely uh, some savory notes. <clears throat> I get the I'm getting the nose here as I'm getting tasting the finish. It's interesting. It's got a nose on it. So I'm going to say a medium finish. And um, not a lot of alcohol burn to this for 46. You know, um, we've got. Uh, Oh, I did, the, the, the dark fruits come and go, but the, uh, the peanut butter is there, the nutty notes, and, um, you know, normally I, I get a little bit of vanilla, but, you know, I did, I did get the wood earlier, but I, I'm going to say this has more of the sweet, uh, it had more of the sweet pears and, uh, or even stewed pears, stewed, stewed apples, just a, uh, uh, for some reason, I'm just not getting the uh, the vanilla, and I haven't always got vanilla out of this one here. So, but uh, overall, it's a nice balance between sweet and sour, uh, and spice, and and tobacco, and a little bit of the chocolate, and of course the um, I'd say you put it all together there, and uh, you've got a, a really nice mouthfeel, you know, good coating. Um, this here, I'm, I'm going to say this guy here, 84 ish, somewhere in that area there is where I put it. Um, it's a, it's definitely a, a, a good value for your money. I'm going to have to check and see what I paid for this. Uh, the dollars I spent on this was not a lot. I bought this one probably a couple of years ago. Um, I have had a couple of these bottles, but I don't remember this ever being pricey. But I will check on the price on it because I have completely forgotten. So I haven't done my homework there. Um, I'm going to add some water to this, okay? <clears throat> and uh, the model itself, um, I wasn't, you know, I'm not really a, I don't really judge bottles like some of the reviewers do, but I do like some bottles and I, I've always liked the shape of this model. I mean, maybe it's not a practical shape for storage, but I just like the shape of it. It's easy to hold on to. I'm not going to drop it. So let's give it a little bit of water. <clears throat> not a lot, just a couple of drops. Good enough. You notice I've got the tr Trudeau glass tonight. <laughs> or, or it's not even tonight, pardon me, this afternoon.
Oh yeah, yeah. More of that savory stuff mixed in with the uh, with the sweet, uh, um, almost a slight bit of licorice, and, they, and they, there is no um, smoke. Could be the charred barrel. So the uh, there is now honey coming through. Honey mixed in with the bears, and um, uh, the savory the savory notes here. Savory notes, a little bit of floral. Okay, water again, palate. Back to the dark fruit again. Dark fruit. I did mention um, the licorice. A wee bit of the licorice in there. But the peanut butter is, is prevalent. And... Um, I have lost that nice coating it, it leaves on the tongue there. So, I think I scored this before I did the water, didn't I? <laughs> um, and that wasn't premeditated. Um, it, it, it can take the water. You, you can add water to this. The water seems to... Um, it's brightened it up, but it hasn't killed uh, any of the... Um, well, it certainly hasn't killed the... the uh, the, the spice notes, which uh, it's it's mellowed mellowed them out a little bit more. Like the tobacco is almost you, it's barely there, but it's more the chocolate. And you got the pepper. Um, cinnamon kind of showed up. And uh, yeah, I, it's it's worth throwing a wee bit. I only did a few drops, but that's all it seems to take. Overall. Um, this drink, it, it, it's, it's ticking all the spots. Uh, why am I giving it an 86, 85? Because I've got an 18 to do, and I, that's how I look at it. Um, whenever you can make 84, 85, 86, you know, um, early in the day maybe, uh, I might be an, it might be an 84, and maybe, I don't think it would go over 85, this one here, but I think 84 is fair right at the moment. That's how I look at it. Um, I try to be um, fair about the price, and I know approximately what I paid, but I don't want to give it to you right now, so I know that I do, I do factor the price in on my scores. I, I think this is over $75, but um, uh, 84 is a fair score, I think, for this year, so um, I recommend it, 84. So I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, Decent 12 years old. And uh, I'm going to ask you to um, drink wisely, drink intelligently. Do not drink and drive. Until the next time, so much.